Today, guys, we learn how to turn any website into a powerful chatbot using large language models. No matter the number of pages or their lengths, you will get up-to-date answers to your question without retraining or fine-tuning the model. And it will even cite the sources so you can verify the answers. Excited? Let's go! In today's project, we work with website sitemaps. A sitemap is an XML file listing all the pages on a website, making it easy for search engines like Google to crawl the site. We will use the sitemap as input to create a pipeline that answers questions about the information on the website, while also citing the sources. To do so, we will use the Longchain library and Chroma, a vector database, to overcome the context size and information freshness limitations of large language models. If you are enjoying this tutorial and finding it helpful, please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It supports me in creating more valuable content like this for you. If you already use ChatGPT or other large language models, you likely encountered three limitations. First, the data freshness. Large language models are trained on huge datasets, like the entire internet, more or less. Training those models is expensive, so you can't afford to retrain them regularly. For example, the dataset used to train ChatGPT only goes up to 2021, so it won't know about any information or events published after this date. Then you have the context size. When you prompt a large language model, there is a maximum input size known as the context. So let's say you want to summarize a document. The maximum amount of characters that you will be able to process will be fixed by the context size. This is a big limitation, especially when working with huge data sources. And the last problem is the lack of trust. Large language models generate response without citing precise sources. It's a critical issue, especially when we know that those models tend to hallucinate information. And that's why for our project, it's crucial to have a system that is able to deliver accurate answers, but also cite the precise sources it used to generate the answer. But don't worry too much. There is a powerful framework to overcome those limitations. And it's called Retrieval Question Answering. To build an effective knowledge base that works with a chatbot, we need to deliver up-to-date answers to the users together with the sources of information. As we discussed, frequently retraining large language models is not an option. The solution is to pass up-to-date documents to the model context, together with our question. However, we must be mindful of the context limitation, so we can't just pass the entire corpus of documents to the model. And that's when retrieval question answering comes to help. It operates in two main phases, preprocessing and inference or question answering. The preprocessing phase is executed only once. First, we gather all the documents to form our knowledge base. In this case, we use the sitemap to download all the website pages and extract the text content. Next, we break the pages into smaller chunks. They should fit within the context size limit. Then we use an embedding model to convert each chunk into a vector. Embeddings turns text into fixed size vectors that captures meaning and context which is useful for finding similar content later on. Lastly, we store all the vectors in a vector database. This specialized storage is designed to handle high-dimensional vectors, enabling similarity searches to find related documents by comparing the distance between vectors. The inference or question-answering phase is repeated for each user query. First, we receive a query from the user and transform it into a vector using our embedding model. We run a similarity search between the query vector and all document chunk vectors, keeping the most similar chunks. We create a prompt by combining the query with the selected chunk's text. Finally, we query the language model with the prompt and return the answer and the sources. To find the sources, we simply identify the pages that contain the chunks used in the prompt. Hey there, I'd love to hear your thoughts or any comments you have about the topic we just covered. Drop a comment below and let's get the conversation going. So we could build the ritual question answering pipeline from scratch, but there is a powerful Python library called Longchain that makes our life easier. It is designed to help us create applications powered by large language models. Simply using those models works fine for simple tasks, but chains are essential to tackle more complex scenarios like answering questions for knowledge base. Longchain works by connecting language models to other data sources and enable them to work in chains. To put it simply, a chain is a sequence of language models that interact together or with other experts to accomplish a task. 
A long chain comes with multiple built-in chains, such as summarization or retrieval question answering, which is our focus today. Ok, so we know the three main limitations of large language models. It's now time to code and use Longchain to build our question answering pipeline. Let's go. Before we start, we need to create a .on file that will contain our OpenAI API key. It will be used later when processing the data. If you don't have one, go on the OpenAI website, create a developer account and generate your API key. Now let's create a file named knowledgebase.py. This file will contain the code related to creating our knowledge base and answering questions. We start by defining a few imports needed for this script. We've got several long chain imports to help us build our corpus of documents and information retrieval strategy. I'll explain those in more detail when we'll use them. Additionally, we import some XML functions to parse sitemaps, dotomf to load environment variables from a dotomf file and logoru which is a simple logger. After the imports, we call the load.of function to load our environment variables. Many websites come with a sitemap containing a list of all the pages and their URLs. It's normally for web crawlers, but we'll use it to extract information about the website. We create a function named extract URLs from sitemap. This function takes a sitemap as input and returns all the URLs it contains. To do this, we use the fromString function, find all the URL elements, and then find the log property within those elements. Finally, we return everything as a list. We are now ready to dive into the knowledge base class that holds the logic to prepare the documents and answer questions. First, we define the init function. It takes as input the sitemap URL, a chunk size for splitting the web page into smaller bits, a chunk overlap to control the overlap between the chunks, and an optional pattern to filter only URLs we are interested in. We use the logger to write progress updates in the terminal. We then download the sitemap and use our extract URLs from sitemap function to get the list of URLs. If we receive the pattern, we filter the URLs accordingly by keeping only those that contain the pattern string. Now we create a data loader using the unstructured URL loader. It's a handy class that takes a list of URLs as input. We call the load function, which downloads all the web page content and stores it in document objects. Next, we create a character text splitter to split each web page into smaller overlapping chunks. We call the split documents function and store the results in the docs variable. If you recall how retrieval question answering works, we now need to transform each chunk into a vector for later retrieval. To do so, we use the OpenAI embedding class from Langchain and Chroma our vector database. We call the from documents method which iterates over all chunks stored in docs and use OpenAI to embed each of them into a vector. Finally, we create a chain using the retrieval QA with sources chain class. It takes as the first input a large language model. Here we pass chat OpenAI, which is ChatGPT. Next, we provide our Chroma database as a retriever and stuff as the chain type. If you remember, the retrieval question answering chain uses the vector database to find relevant chunks for answering the question and then calls the ChatGPT model on those chunks to get the answer. We need to specify the chain type to define how we aggregate the information. Stuff sends the entire text in the chunk along with the question to the model to get the answer. Our knowledge base, powered by a vector database and a large language model, is now ready. But we still need to create the ask method to answer questions. It gets a question as input and returns the answer with the sources as link to the web pages containing the chunk used to generate the response. To do so, we simply call the chain that we created in the init function. If you've made it so far, congratulations. We did the most complicated part. We create a main function and build a knowledge base using our class and the sitemap from the Next.js website. It's a JavaScript framework to build React applications. We also filter the URLs and keep only the pages from the API reference documentation. For the test, we ask the model to tell us how to deploy a Next.js application. Then we print the results. Let's run it in the terminal. We can see the logs as the knowledge base construct itself. And finally, we get our answer with a link to the relevant web page. It tells us to run the build and then the start command and explain us how to choose the port, which is pretty accurate. The cool thing is that we get up-to-date information since the model is looking into the data that we provided from the website. Also, by getting the sources that are used to produce the answer, we can verify the output and check for model hallucinations. It's already pretty cool, right? But I have a bonus for you. 
I will show you how to write a simple website in Python using the Streamlit library to build our knowledge base and interact with it. Create a script named app.py. It will contain the code for our Streamlit app. First, we import the necessary libraries and our knowledge base class. We set up the page configuration with a title and icon using the setPageConfig function. Then we we'll create a layout for our app using the Streamlit's built-in functions. We we'll remove white space from the top of the page and sidebar by using custom CSS with ST Markdown. Then we we'll create a section in the UI to configure our knowledge base. We we'll create two columns. In the first column, we allow the user to input the sitemap URL. In the second column, we provide an optional URL filter input. We can now create the Ask section where users can input their queries. We use the ST Cache Resource Decorator to cache the knowledge base and the answer to avoid recalculating them for every interaction. It's really important to use the cache because Streamlit reevaluates the whole scripts for every user interaction, so we don't want to recalculate every time the slow functions. It's better for performance. Finally, we create the part that will display the answer. After obtaining the knowledge base and the user's query, we display the answer and its sources in a clean and organized format using the Streamit Markdown function. And that's it guys. We've built a user-friendly, AI-powered knowledge-based app that can answer questions about information contained in a website using Streamlit and our knowledge base class. Thanks for sticking with me through this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. For more resources, you can check the description below. You can also check out the documentation for the Longchain library. It covers a lot of use cases. And see you in the next video.